Basketball fans, welcome into the Hangout. I am Akil Augustine, and this is Canada's home for talking hoops. My voice still hasn't fully recovered from Jurassic Park and the Raptors. I hope they've recovered from their last game. Let's talk about it with our panel of experts repping the OVO crew today. It's OVO Dan, a.k.a. Dan Gladman. <laughs> I haven't recovered from Cleveland yet. Let me what time did you make land? that clear. A uh, little after 1.30 a.m. Damn, all right. Yeah. Late, late nights, early mornings. Arguably, arguably the best shooter in Canadian history. Right now it's a toss-up wow. between him and Nicholas Stauskas. This is my main man, Brady Heslip. How's it going, baby? Good, I'm great, man. Happy to be here. Okay, good. We're happy to have you. And um, <laughs> the first lady of Canadian sports, she holds us down at night on TSN, and she's gonna hold us down on the couch today. Kate Beerness, Sports Center anchor, beautiful young lady, Thank you. and uh, Under Armour Schiller. You're out there shilling for yeah. Under Armour. No, I love my Stephs. What can I say? So, <laughs> I'm a little biased when it comes to them, so sorry in, in uh, advance about my opinion. Okay, well, in the second round, we'll talk about Done it. But right now, let's jump into the Toronto Raptors. All I gotta say. 116 to 78, the final score in a absolutely embarrassing blowout loss in the land to LeBron James and the cast of characters. Kate, what is the next stop on this emotional roller coaster of a ride that is the playoffs? Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Because I, after the first two games in Cleveland, no shot I would have said that they would have come back to the ACC and did what they ended up doing. Absolutely. It was incredible. I mean, they changed their game plan. Uh, the guys were playing as a team. The ball movement was fantastic. And all of a sudden, Kyrie and Kevin couldn't hit anything. Yeah. They go back to Cleveland. And all of a sudden, Kevin Love's a different player. And in my opinion, it was just the pressure that they put on Kyle and DeMar. They could get absolutely nothing going. And then Cleveland ends up killing them on the boards as well. So yeah, that, I've that never, was huge. It was massive. And I've never seen, I've never seen, I mean, such a drastic difference between game teams, to game. game to game and teams playing at home. I mean, it's absolutely ridic ridiculous. So home I can't, court advantage means something. Right. So, I mean, if I'm going to sit here, sure, then the Raptors are going to win game six because that's what's happened. Okay, don't jump ahead on our script yet. Okay, today, no problem. Right? I, won't. I still I won't. have questions to ask. But Brady, something came out earlier. Dwayne's going to get mad at me because he has his little talking points. But something came out this morning. Steve Simmons wrote an article on which he kind of put two Toronto Raptors on blast for being out late. Damari Carroll, of course, and the kid from the sixth, Corey Joseph. Of we're seen in an area that's known to be uh, you know, outside of a casino at around 2 a.m. on a night before a game. But the game isn't until 8.30. So, I mean, what's to be made? You're a professional basketball player playing in Europe. You know that you know, there are some nights where you got to stay up late just to get your mind cleared or you actually try to just live your life. So what do you make of the story they're trying to build around Corey and Damari being out at 2 a.m.? I don't know. I think maybe uh, <clears throat> they're coming up with some excuse looking for somebody to blame but honestly you know these guys are professionals the best players in the world Absolutely. the top of the top the Eastern Conference Finals you go out sometimes they're there for a reason they're professionals they know how to handle their business and if they need to be out till 132 then they wake up and they can play they know themselves, man. They can they can do what they need to do. They're grown men. They're professionals. They get paid to do it. Yeah, I mean, Dad was up until 1:30. I was doing Sports Center until three. I mean, come on, we all stay up late. I was up until 2 a.m. that night as well. I mean, it was a beautiful night in Cleveland, and people people wanted to go out. I think that is such a non-story. Yeah. Oh, and really? uh, and honestly, would would you rather the Raptors had lost that game on a last-second buzzer beater by LeBron? and the Raptors play their best game and, yeah, and lose that way. Yeah, I, I they, they got blown out. Brady, would you they, have? I, no, I wouldn't have. They, they've would've. been blown out a couple times in this series, and we saw them come back to Toronto and respond to the humiliation by playing their best game, possibly of the playoffs in game three. Why can't they do it again? Okay, go. Kate yep. said that the Raptors are going to win game six. So I guess the question I have for you, Dan and Brady, can the Raptors win a game seven in Cleveland against LeBron James? Putting you on the spot there, buddy. The way things are going right now, yeah. I would say no. Absolutely. The home court advantage is clearly huge, both teams. I agree with Kate. She said there's no way I thought they're going to come back here and win two, and I honestly didn't think so either. <laughs> I hope they did. It's great. Yeah, you know, it it's great for the city. It's amazing. But I didn't think they were going to do it, and they did it. I think Cleveland came. They were like, we're going to come up there. We're going to handle one of these games. We're going to come back, win in game five. Now, come back here. Raptors are going to leave it all do or die, you know, but... Going back there, the difference is crazy. It's too much. So one thing that was supposed to change in the last game that they played, game five, mm -hmm. was Jonas Valanciunas available to play. He was available in game four, didn't play. Available in game five. 18 minutes, nine points, zero rebounds. 
and the Raptors were absolutely obliterated <coughs> on the boards. Dan Gladman, is Jonas Valanciunas hurting this team? In the no. minimum minutes. Jonas Valanciunas did not hurt the team. He, no. I thought he was the best player out Three, there for I the think. Raptors. Totally the best. Um, there weren't a lot of rebounds for the Raptors because Cleveland hit every darn shot. I think shot they shot 57%. They, they, the they shot a huge percentage. There were no rebounds to be had. And, you know, yes, Tr Tristan Thompson came out and set the tone offensive re with the offensive rebounds off the start. That definitely hurt, and that, that kind of showed you what was going to happen in that game. You know what, too? When you're turning the ball over that much, too, like we talk about Kyle and DeMar and seven turnovers between them, come on. I mean, 18 turnovers, I think it was in that game. You don't even have a chance to get rebounds because you're turning over the ball constantly, and Cleveland's hitting everything in sight. So put it all together, and I mean, it, it, from head to toe, that team, they were terrible. They really were. Quickly, I want to ask you, what is the next step for this Toronto Raptors team? Because when I look at them right now, they remind me of a less talented Oklahoma City Thunder team from a couple years ago. It's going to be Russell. It's going to be KD down the stretch and everyone else just get out the way. I see that a lot with this team. What's the next step? They've done the internal growth. Is it free agency? They've gotten the good draft picks. Brady, where do you see the next area of improvement for the Toronto Raptors team being in order for them to compete and maybe win out if uh, conference finals next on year? you. <laughs> mm, good call. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Or shooting. Consistent shooting. In the corner, yeah, I'll give you 50%. But honestly, I think the main thing is the consistency from the, from that star power duo there. Yeah, Lamar, they need to be more consistent. Kyle, when they win, those guys have 25, 30 together. And you saw yesterday, LeBron, Kyrie, K-Love, 24, Show 23, up. 25. So those two guys, for the Raptors to win games, be in games like this, 25 every night, especially in the postseason. Speaking of consistency... LeBron James, if he wins this series, will be heading to his sixth straight NBA Finals. Guys, a lot of talk about LeBron James being this, that, and the third. I don't think I've ever seen a player go to six straight NBA Finals who didn't play for a Boston Celtics team in the 60s. So do we hold him to an unfair standard, Kate? I don't think we hold him to an unfair standard because I think he's one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Okay. Um, and what I love, you know what's funny too? I mean, we can hate on LeBron and the flopping in this and Oh, that. we do, trust oh, me. I know, I know. He's highly I, memeable. I, I hate, I hate the flopping, I'll admit that. The one thing I love when watching LeBron, and the great thing is in the postseason, you get to see these teams a lot more. I'm just watching Richard Jefferson and how old is he at this point, honestly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm thinking with, with LeBron, the one thing I love with him is you really notice how unselfish he is. I mean, and maybe to a fault, yep. he is too much unselfish because in game four especially, he was kicking that ball out way too much when you know he should have gone up with it. And I just, I love players that make everyone around them so much better. And that's one of the things that I think I constantly forget about yep. LeBron and his power and his size is just how really good he is as a teammate. Brady, do people properly appreciate LeBron James? Quickly before we I don't, break. I don't know if they do. Um, one thing I was going to say was watching the game the other night, like some of the passes he throws and the, yeah. how big he is coming, he's like, at half court on the right side. It reminds you of me. Laser to the left corner. Like some people who watch Magic the game, they don't, they don't see that. Yeah, but it's, they don't it's see ridiculous. That. It takes a real educated fan to do that. All right, Kate. Okay. Well, thank you guys. It's a great first segment. We're wrapping up the Raptors. Hopefully, when they come back to the six, they're going to turn the six upside down and it'll be a nine now. All right. <laughs> Jurassic Park has been going off, and I love all the people out there. Make sure you make your way down. Friday night. It's hot up in the six, and we need you there to rally around all your boys. Right, Brady? The city's hot right now. Hot. <laughs> we'll be back. Hang out. <laughs>